But that's no longer the case. There are two big barriers today. One is financial, and the other is academic. Now, I'm, I'm, I know what I'm talking about. I'm an expert. Because I have been in education for 41 years. I started teaching freshman English at Morehouse College in 1969. This will be my 41st year in higher education. I have taught, and, I, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a soldier in this war. I, I, have, I taught freshman English for 20 years. At Spelman, at Spelman and Morehouse College, colleges. I got to teach some other literature courses too, but everybody, you know, at these smaller large colleges, everybody teaches freshman, freshman English. And in many ways, it was the most rewarding course I ever taught because I could tell the difference. I could see if I was effective with my students, their writing improved. But when I stopped teaching and became an administrator, my, my, I had a different perspective on what was going on, and I became president of Dillard University down in New Orleans. And I did that in 1997. And I'd been away from teaching for a few years, and I'd never done this in New Orleans, and, and, and I, I kept saying that we would have students who had been admitted to Dillard. Some of them were had graduated at the top of their class. They were the valedictorians and the salutatorians. And when they got to Dillard and we tested them, we had to put them into developmental. That's another word for remedial courses. Now just think of it. If you're a parent, and you know your kid has perfect attendance, and is getting all these awards, and is at the top of her class, you think you've done everything you're supposed to, and in some cases that your, your, your child has more education than you do. So you really don't know. You, you're not able to assess. And you, and you send that kid off to college, and the college tells you, you know, the first three courses this youngster's going to take are going to be for no credit. You're going to pay just as if they were, but they're going to be no credit because this young person doesn't have the basic skills. And I was troubled by that. Because, you know, it, it not only was painful to see the young person frustrated, mm -hmm. it was painful to see the parents angry. But it was bad for the school. Because our graduation rates, you know, we were, students were taking longer to graduate, if they gra or, or they got so frustrated they dropped out. So I said, I'm going to figure out what's going on here. One of the things that happened is invited by Teach for America to come teach a class. And so I left the Dillard campus and went into New Orleans East and went into one of the high schools over there and, and taught a class. And, uh, and that, that's where I saw where the problem was. That these students were not getting the academic preparation they needed in the schools. And for the last 10 years, and I've, I've been working at this for almost 10 years now, I have determined that the work that we're going to do at UNCF is going to be in, along two lines. One, we're going to continue to raise money because we know that there are so many young people who are going to need financial support. And if we're successful at the other thing we're going to do, there will be more who need financial support because there will be more young people ready to go to college. But we're not going to have more kids of color, more black kids ready to go to college, unless we change what happens to them before they get to college. And that's why this is a war. This is a battle. And we can't Pretend that it's anything else. And let me tell you what we need. We need more warriors, more heroes and sheroes fighting in this battle. Because the lives and futures of our children are at stake. Now, in 1944, when President uh, Patterson created the United Negro College Fund, it was okay. I mean, let's face it. Most black people didn't have a college degree. You could get a high school diploma 
1944. Go get a job at Ford or in a steel factory or a GM, and you know, you could make good money. You could raise a family. Those days are over. Because <laughs> if you go into one of those, if there is an auto plant in the United States, if you go into one of those, they're full of computers, require high skills. There are no, there are a few heavy lifting jobs left. The muscle that has to be developed now is this one. And the difference between those who get the opportunity to develop this muscle and get the credentials, the difference in their lives and those who don't is extraordinary. Let me tell you what the difference is. If you have a high school diploma versus a college degree, a college degree recipient will earn a million dollars more over his or her lifetime than some t someone with a high school diploma. People with a, high, with a college degree are healthier. Yeah, you're making a million dollars more. I guess you are healthier. <laughs> they live longer. And you know what else they do? They're better citizens. They vote more. They're more engaged. But just by that one measure, financial, and, and not only do they have that, but they also learn something very important that they're beginning to learn early, but they have to have more time. They learn how to learn. Because, you know, you get one job back in the 40s, and it might last you a lifetime. You get one job in 2010, and you'd be lucky if it gets you through 2012. And every time you get a job, you're going to have to improve your skills. And you know that, and you better do it on your own first. So you've got to learn how to learn. It does, you can't remember a few facts because facts change. You've got to learn how to to think critically, to be analytical. You got to learn, and, and this is something that I'm so proud of Kip that's working on. Our children have got to learn to communicate effectively. They've got to learn how to read for understanding but they've also got to learn to speak and to write. But I'm going to tell you, if they can't write, they won't make it through college. So this is, this is really the future of our children, which is at stake. Now, you know, some of these public schools are doing a good job. Some of them are doing a great job. But a whole bunch of them are doing a horrible job. And what we've got to do is to make sure that there are more of them doing a good and great job and fewer of them doing a really bad job because they are failing our children. They are failing our children. And until we get them all to do a great job, we need to support the schools that are doing a really great job for our children. <laughs>